Okay, thank you all for coming and uh, thank you for the invitation to talk to you. So, a little bit of a prelude that I hadn't planned on making. So the prelude is to give you a bit of a background on what I usually talk about when I talk and how what I'm talking about today differs and how it relates. So I work at the intersection of law and neuroscience, but I'm actually a philosopher. Um, usually what I look at is I look at all the good ways in which neuroscience can be used within the context of the criminal law. So for instance, to help courts make more accurate assessments of responsibility. For instance, by looking at brain scans and the way in which brain scans can be used to shed light on whether somebody really is uh, does have sufficient mental capacity to be fully responsible. I also sometimes talk about the promise of neuroscience to develop techniques, intervention techniques, to not punish people, but rather to simply fix them. So to treat people with mental disorders in order that they don't commit crimes. But today's talk is different in that what I'm talking about is the way in which neuroscientific intervention techniques can be used, and in fact are being used at the moment in this country, to, in a way that I think is wrong. Namely, the restoration of mental competence, so the use of drugs to make people competent for execution. Now, being a foreigner, I find this you know, to be a strange phenomenon that happens in this country. Okay, so since the beginning of this year, eight people have been executed in this country by the government. Of those eight people, two have been executed in this state. Of those two people, one of whom, I've written this down, um, one who was executed on January the 27th, his name was Warren Lee Hill. His IQ was only 70. Now, it is estimated that between 10 and 15 percent of all people on death row in this country either suffer from severe, severe mental illness or have severe intellectual disabilities. Now, these people are thought to pose a special problem to the law and for execution, per se. And part of the reason for this is that here in America, the Eighth Amendment to the US Constitution has a ban on cruel and unusual punishment. And it is thought that executing people who are either severely mentally ill or who have severe intellectual handicaps that that, involve, that is an instance of, intellect, uh, of cruel and unusual punishment. Now, I agree, it's a terrible thing to execute people. But my worry is that if this is the only thing that prevents us from executing these people right now, then move yourself forward a few more years. Already we are developing very good drugs to treat diseases, to treat mental disorders. Some drugs that I sometimes talk about in my talks are the so-called cognitive enhancement medications. And so here's my worry. My worry is that it is only a matter of time before what we start to say is, ah, oh, so this person is severely intellectually disabled. They, they do not have sufficient capacity to be executed. Not a problem. Give them these mental capacity restoration medications, cognitive enhancers which will boost their IQ, and what, then they'll be sufficiently competent to be executed? Or for that matter, that we will provide people who currently are mentally ill with medications, medications that treat the mental illness, only so that we can then execute them. So I worry that if our only problem is that right now these people are not yet competent to be executed, well, don't worry, in a few years, this will change. And I think that'd be a terrible thing. Now, the fact that I recoil from this prospect, though, I take this to be a bit of an indicator of the fact that maybe the real problem isn't that we have a special case against executing people. 
against execution in regards to these people, but rather there is a broader worry, that the worry has to do in general with executing anyone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend a little bit of, bit of time talking about punishment and the criminal law to give you a bit of a background on, of why it is important to, well, I, won't, I would like you to understand what, punish, what aims punishment is meant to serve. I'll then talk about a couple of different types of punishment and then I'll zoom in onto the issue of people with intellectual disabilities and with mental illness and why it is that we say that we shouldn't execute them. I'll end by commenting on what it is that I think focusing on people, uh, focusing on the case of restoring people's competence for execution, what this highlights about what is really wrong, what is cruel in the least about executing anyone and not just them. So, punishment. So in the criminal law, the typ typically we hear about five different aims of punishment. So one is that by punishing someone, in particular by putting them in prison, you protect society. They can no longer go around harm others. Another purpose for punishment or aim of punishment is retribution, that this is something that a person deserves. So we put them in prison because we believe that they need to be punished. This is simply what they've deserved, what they've done. Another aim that is also mentioned is deterrence. So here the thought is, let's make an example of this person by punishing them in this particular way, by putting them in prison, it's not pleasant to be there. Others will think twice, and maybe this person will think twice about committing the same crime. The expression of a certain kind of communion with the victim, and also of to denounce what the criminal offender did, is another aim of criminal punishment. Finally, the fifth aim is reform. So we hope that by putting people in prison for sufficiently long, they'll have time to reflect on what they did wrong and on why they are there. And that if they do come out, then they'll come out better people for it. So these are the five aims of criminal punishment. Now, and I've spoken about them in terms of putting people in prison. Of course, there have been other kinds of punishment, right? So for instance, the strap or the whip. We don't practice corporal punishment anymore, thank God. Um, but another form of punishment is indeed execution. The first thing to note about execution, even as applied to people who are fully competent, like everyone in this room, is that we no longer worry about reform, right? So this is not going to be an aim of execution because the person's dead. There's no further opportunity for reform. Um, but now, think of what it is that happens when we have people who are either severely intellectually handicapped or who have severe mental illness. Why is it that we have a ban? Why is it that we say that executing them would be an instance of cruel and unusual punishment? Well, it has to do with the way in which the various aims that I mentioned to start with, those five aims, would not be satisfied. So think of protecting society. Well, yes, you do protect society by killing someone who's severely mentally ill, if you think that they might commit another crime. But of course, that's a pretty you know, great extent to go to, to protect society. There are much easier ways of protecting society than by killing a person. Likewise, if what you want to do is to denounce what they've done, again, you don't need to kill them to do this. Um, there are other ways of doing it, simply to express that this is the case, that we denounce what happened, what this person did, and what they did to this the family, for instance. Now, in regards to deterrence, it's very hard to deter people who are either severely intellectually handicapped or severely mentally ill because they're not going to be able to draw the connection between the punishment that has been inflicted on this particular person and the fact that they too might suffer the same kind of punishment. So we're not going to deter them. And of course, reform isn't going to be achieved either by executing someone, as I mentioned earlier. So it all falls down to asking the following question. Do we achieve the aim of retribution? by executing people who are insane. 
And usually the way in which the debate works in this field, at least in philosophy and in jurisprudence, is that people say, look, somebody who can't understand the fact that they're about to be killed, or for that matter, even the fact that they are about to be killed, somebody who is simply vacant, not here, or terrified, they don't understand what's happening to them, that would not be an instance of retribution. They need to understand that what is about to happen is that they are about to be punished for a crime that they did commit. And that what's happening right now is not victimization, but justice. And it is in this that the criminal law's approach to punishing the severely intellectually handicapped and the severely mentally ill in his. It's that they can't understand. So this is where I now shift to asking the question, well, all right, so if that's the problem, then why not say, well, look, let's work on a solution to this problem? And this is not a solution that I, that I endorse. I'm talking this through with you because I want you to, th to think of just how horrid a suggestion this is. So here's a solution. Um, if, the, if this person's IQ is not sufficiently high, well, let's give them cognitive enhancement medications. So these are medications that some people uh, already take at universities and in other places to score better uh, on university exams. Let's improve, let's boost their IQ and then we'll kill them. Would that be wrong? I hazard a guess that it would be. Um, but why? What's what exactly is it that's wrong with this? Or for that matter, take the person who's currently severely mentally ill. And again, well, if sever severe mental illness is the problem, then why not provide them with one of the many medications that we already have for mental illness? Or maybe some of the better medications that we're going to develop in the next few years, maybe the next couple of decades. Would that solve the problem? Could we say, oh great, give these people the medications and then execute them? My suspicion is that in both of these cases, you're probably going to think there's something really deeply going wrong, if that's what we end up doing. And here's what I think is going wrong. What I think is going wrong in these cases is that what is expressed, well, let me put this a different way. <laughs> Once you have to intervene to make it the case that someone has sufficient mental capacity, that they're sufficiently with it in order to be executed, you have to ask yourself, so what is it exactly that I'm trying to achieve here? What is it that I want this person to do? Why does it matter even that they understand that they are about to be executed? And the only thing that I keep coming back to is the following a really ugly observation. The observation that what we want this person to feel is terror. Because uh, unless they understand what is about to happen to them, they won't be able to feel this terror, right? They'll not be able to say, wow, the state is about to inject me with toxic chemicals and they're, and they're not going to stop. And furthermore, the state wants me to understand that I am to blame for my own awful predicament. There might be other reasons, but to me, this is the reason that, stand, that uh, seems to be the most salient. That what we are trying to do in these cases is indeed to instill in people a sense of terror. A sense of terror which they wouldn't be able to feel unless we made them sufficiently mentally competent. Now, I think it's instructive to compare this case to a different case. So, when we set out to execute people, normal people, people whose competence isn't in question. The way in which the discussion is often framed is in terms of whether this particular penalty fits the crime. And those are really difficult discussions to have because how the hell do we ever find out what is, what is a fitting punishment for a given offense? However, once you move to start thinking about actually taking an individual and making it the case that they will have certain mental capacities, and you ask, well, what mental capacities am I trying to restore? Just how high an IQ do I, do I want them to have, such that they will understand what is about to happen? 
once you intentionally have to restore a person's mental capacity, that's when you realize, that's when you are forced to answer the question of what am I trying to do? And you know, so the reason why I compare these two cases is because I think that A, they highlight something important about our awful aims in executing people, but not just in executing people who are insane. Because if I have problems, or if you have problems with executing someone who is now competent, but their competence had to be restored, well then why would you not have problems with executing someone who is competent, but their competence didn't have to be restored, right? I don't see that these two situations are particularly different. If I, if I have issues with killing somebody after they've been made competent, after, after they've been made well, well then why don't I also have issues with killing all the other people? So what's the moral of this story? The moral of this story is that I don't think that we have a special case here. I don't think that the objections to killing people who are either severely mentally ill or who suffer from severe intellectual disability, I don't think that we have a special case there. I think the same case applies across the board to executing all people. And the second point, and there's only two points to my talk, is that, like I said at the start, you know, so I work in a field of the field of law and neuroscience, which normally takes itself to try to make the world a better place. But in this particular case, the scientists working in various neuro labs and the chemists working on new medications, they need to be aware of the fact that their medications can actually be used for some pretty awful purposes. And as a matter of fact, they are being used in this country. People are being forced to take medications, to make them competent, to be executed. Um, so the other point is simply to try and make sure that if there are any neuroscientists or psychologists here or chemists, um, that you participate in the debate about uh, medicating people to be competent for execution. Um, thank you very much.